Here we're going to look at a solution to a problem from the British Math Olympiad, and this comes from the 1993 version, and it's round one, question one. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the statement of the problem. So the goal is to find a six-digit number that satisfies these two rules. First, it must be a perfect square. And then second, the last three digits equal the first three digits plus one. So an example of that would be two, three, four, two, three, five, but that's not a perfect square, so that doesn't satisfy the first, but this is like kind of an idea of what's going on with the second. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at how this goes. So let's see if we can write this number out. So we have D1, D2, D3. So those are like the first three digits. And then D1, D2, and then D3 plus one. Those are like our last three digits. But now the next thing that I wanna do is notice that I can write this thing as X, which makes this whole thing right here X plus one. Okay, great. Now, since this is in the thousandths place, so notice we have hundred thousandths, ten thousandths, thousandths, that means that this whole thing can de be decomposed into 1000x plus x plus one. Great. Which means our number is of the form 1000 and one x plus one. And we're gonna say that's equal to n squared because we want that to be a perfect square. So now let's go, go ahead and decode what this means. So now notice that that means we can write 1001 x equals n squared minus one, which we can factor this with the difference of squares into n plus one, n minus one, like that. Now the next thing that I wanna do is factor 1001, and maybe we'll notice over here that 1001 equals seven times 11 times 13. Great, and then another thing that I wanna do is assume that X can be factored in some way. Maybe this way we'll include the number one, but that's kind of okay. So we'll assume that X equals A times B. Okay, great. And so that's gonna give me the following equation. So I'm gonna maybe swap the sides of the equal sign here. So we have uh, n minus one times n plus one equals um, seven times 11 times 13 times a times b. Okay, so now here's the idea for the rest of the solution. We wanna take the factors on the right side. So in other words, we're gonna split the right-hand side factors among n minus one and n plus one. And then along the way, we're gonna keep in mind that a six digit number, which is our n squared, needs to be between 100,000 and 999,999. In other words, like essentially a million. So what that tells us is that our n has to be between around 316, so that's approximately the square root of 100,000, and then 1,000. And then also, notice that if n is between 316 and 1,000, then n plus one and n minus one are like in the same range of size as n, so that means that each of these needs to be between 316 and 1,000. So in other words, when we split these factors up, and we're gonna have some choices over A and B as we'll see, this splitting up of these factors needs to be done in a way that each portion is between 316 and 1,000. Okay, so now that we've got this idea worked out, um, I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll pick up and uh, find a solution. On the last board, we outlined our strategy and we said that we wanted to split these five factors, seven, 11, 13, A and B, where A and B are yet unknown, among these two factors on the left-hand side, N minus one and N plus one. And another thing that we argued was that both n minus one and n plus one have to approximately be, be between 316 and 1,000, so that's really important. Another really trivial thing that's super important is that n plus one minus n minus one equals two. 
Okay, so you can split this up a number of different ways. One thing that you can't do, however, is put 7, 11, and 13 all in one factor because 7 times 11 times 13 is 1,001. So that means that when splitting these things up, you want to split it up so that uh, 2 of 7, 11, and 13 go into n minus 1 or n plus 1, and one of them goes in the other. And then kind of obviously we're going to split the a times B up among each factor. Okay, great. So um, what we'll try, and the great thing about this is we only want to find one solution, but this kind of outline will work to find all solutions. So what we want to try is the following. Let's go ahead and set n minus 1 equal to 7 times a, and we'll set n plus 1 equal to 11 times 13 times b, but that's equal to 143 times b. Okay, great. But now, notice that will definitely give us n minus 1 times n plus 1 equals 1,001 times a times b. In other words, 1,001 times our x from earlier in the solution. But it also needs to satisfy this rule given by this equation. In other words, 143b minus 7a equals 2. And now I should say here that we could have done this in the other order as well. We could have put 143b up here and 7a down here. And we could have split up 7, 11, and 13 a number of different ways. And you'll get solutions from most of the ways of splitting this up. Okay, so now we want to solve this equation, which is a linear Diophantine equation. Now, I just want to recall that the GCD of 143 and 7 in fact equals 1, but that means there exists u and v, which are integers, with 143u plus 7v equals 1. And you get that u and v with something called the extended Euclidean algorithm. So I'll let you guys look that up, but that's a really important tool to have at your disposal for these kind of contest problems. So what we're going to do is solve this equation for u and v, use that to build a solution to this equation. As we'll see, there will actually be infinitely many solutions, and we can set the parameter equal to something to find something that will work for our case. Okay, so like I said, we need to do the extended Euclidean algorithm, which means we first need to divide uh, 7 into 43 and find the quotient remainder. Luckily, that's pretty easy. That's 7 times 20 plus 3. And then um, just the standard strategy for the extended Euclidean algorithm, this old divisor becomes the new dividend. So we have 7 down here equals. So this old remainder becomes the new divisor. So we have 3 times 2 plus 1. And we're at a remainder of 1, which is the GCD. And so that means uh, we're done with our division algorithm part of it. Now we like invert each of these equations. So this one is going to become 1 equals 7 minus 3 times 2. And then this one up top is going to become 3 equals 143 minus 7 times 20. Okay, great. And the important thing here is we want to think about 143 and 7 as variables here. So we want to keep those intact. Now the next thing that I want to do is take this version of 3 and plug it into this equation and see what we get. So that's going to give us 1 equals 7 minus 2 times, and then I'll uh, write my copy of 3 as above. So this is going to be 143 minus uh, 20 times 7. But now, moving everything around, we can combine all of the 143 terms and all of the 7 terms. And notice that's going to give us the following equation. So we're going to have minus 2 times 143. So we have um, 143 times minus 2. So that's my 143 term. Good. And then how many 7 terms am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have 40 plus 1. So I'll have plus um, 7 times 41 equals 1. Okay, great. But now we don't want 
a solution for this equals one. We want a solution where this equals two. And so we can get that just by multiplying this entire equation by two. And that will give us 143 times negative four plus seven times 82 equals two. Okay, great. But next is we want to notice that we can get infinitely many solutions to this just by adding and subtracting the LCM of 143 and 7. But in this case, the LCM of 143 and 7 is just their product. So that's exactly what we'll do. So we're going to go ahead and add 143 times 7 and then times some arbitrary value t to this term. And then we're going to subtract 143 times 7 times an arbitrary value t from this term. And so now let's go ahead and see what that gives us. So that's going to give us 143. And now here we have 7t minus 4 once we put all of those together. And then here I can factor a minus sign out and we're going to have minus 7 and then we'll have 143t minus 82. 143t minus 82, and this equals 2. Okay, now this is going to be a super important equation. I'll go ahead and lift that up, and then we'll move on to the end. So let's see where we are. So we've got this n minus 1 equals 7a, this n plus 1 equals 143b, but we need the difference of these to be 2 because the difference of the left hand side is obviously 2. So we need 143b minus 7a to be 2, but we also need b to be between 1 and 7 because if it's bigger than 7, then 143 times b is going to be bigger than a thousand, but that will break this rule up here. And then next, we need A to be between 1 and 142, and that's because if A is bigger than 142, then we break this rule up here as well. Okay, so now let's look at this over here. On the last board, using the extended Euclidean algorithm, we found that we've got this uh, parametric version of solutions to this equation. So we have 143 times 7t minus 4 minus 7 times 143 minus 82 equals 2. And now this is going to be true for all integers z. So, notice that this guy right here is playing the role of B, and then this guy right here is playing the role of A. So what we really want to do is pick T so that um, we have B between 1 and 7, like we outlined right here, and A is between 1 and 142, like we outlined right here. Okay, great. But it's not too hard to see which values of uh, t will give you that. And in fact, maybe only a single value of t will give you that. And that will be t equals 1. So let's go ahead and set t equals 1. But that is going to give us b equals 3. Because notice we've got 7 minus 4 is 3. And then also a is equal to, so you can check 143 minus 82 is 61. Okay, but then next, remember from way back on a bunch of boards ago, we had this x equals um, a times b. So that means our x in this case is 3 times 61. But then you can check that that is equal to 183. That's pretty easy to see. But then our n squared was equal to 1,001x um, plus 1. And then that's equal to 183184. And we know that it's a perfect square because of the construction that we've outlined, and it satisfies this first rule. Okay, that technically finishes the solution because we found a six-digit number that satisfies this, but I'll leave it to you guys to find some more six-digit numbers that satisfy this. Maybe leave them in the comments and say how you split up the factors 7 and 11 and 13 to give you that other solution. Okay, we'll be done here.